Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. And in this painting video, I'm going to paint something a little bit more unique today. So we're going to do a little bit of camouflage, but hopefully do a bit of a two-tone camo. So we're going to do a bit of a camouflage paint job across the bottom of the miniature on this particular Space Marine here. And then we're going to try and, and adapt a little bit of an active camo so the top half will look like... Um, almost a little bit like an ultramarine with camouflage turning into camo ready to face off against the uh, the enemies out in the field so what we're gonna do is just plan out and start out with the dark Prussian blue with Vallejo I mean if you use your Citadel and you paint a lot of uh, a lot of space marines and you paint them your own sort of colors if you paint them the ultramarines or um, your dark angels or anything like that, you know, you could paint them however, this is just sort of an example or an idea. But if you want to follow along with me, I'm using a, a dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. And literally all I'm doing is I'm just going to paint across sort of the top part of this miniature. So what I kind of want to do is create a contrast from the top and the bottom, but also the left to the right, just to kind of create and make a little bit more of an interesting feel and an interesting look to the miniature. So I'm just mapping out here that we can keep the left arm blue and paint the right arm in the camouflage so that again it creates a little bit more of a uh, uh, a contrast and a bit of a difference so once you've gone around and painted and created your first layer um, across the top as you see I've just given sort of an idea of to where the the camouflage is gonna like almost look like it's creating that effect um, then you just want to go and paint the bottom now for the bottom I start with a khaki color um, if you're a Citadel user, this is a Zandri Dust, so it's very, very similar. I'm using a Vallejo Kagi, same sort of color. And pretty much what we're just going to do is paint the bottom half of the miniature. So the top is blue, the bottom is khaki. And then we're going to build up that camouflage effect on the bottom anyway. So don't worry too much about it. You haven't got to be any, uh, you haven't got to be precise or exact or anything like that. Just make sure to cover all of the armor across the bottom in this sort of khaki color and then you can paint the top half if you want it to be red blue green you know depending on which chapter of space marine uh, you paint or you represent this may take a couple of coats and that's fine you know take as many coats as you uh, you need normally about two or three nice diluted thin coats would would be uh, would be perfect that would be about right and then you just want to move on and use a uh, sort of like patches then so kind of like what I've done previously with a desert camouflage it's just gonna map out a few random sort of patches and, and random patterns so that it breaks up this khaki color so for this I'm using a Vallejo military green um, you can use a mixture of different colors you can use um, from from a citadel range or the army painter range or whichever range you want the idea with this one is to try to use something that is quite dark um, so the military green is, is sort of like a toned down, it is quite a dark green. Um, and again that's all for contrast purposes because between the, the, the khaki that's quite light, then of course the dark green that we're going to use and we're going to mix that with a few different like browns and things like that as well, earthy tones to create a kind of, um, uh, like, I guess kind of like a jungle camo and things like that for when they're out in the field. You don't have to be precise with these. Um, these are going to be completely individual for every miniature you put them on. You're not going to paint these patches exact on every miniature. It is just about trying to see which way catches your eye and feels nice personally to yourself, okay? So don't be too hung up and worried about trying to get this exact and precise, especially if you're painting up a batch painting um, like a group of miniatures with um, camouflage. This type of thing works really good on Imperial Guard and things like that as an example. Um, so yeah, once, once your green is dry, you should have something that looks like this, a little bit of a patchy color and a patchy tone. And then, as I said, we're just going to move on then to do a little bit of a brown. For me, I'm using a flat earth um, from Vallejo again. I tend to use a lot of Vallejo colors. And this is just kind of a mid-tone brown. So you kind of want like a little bit of a middle brown. 
and the idea for this is to just go around and kind of um, you can go over the green and around the khaki and again just random patches here and whatever looks nice and feels natural to you, um, you you paint up however you like tend to enjoy telling people to paint how you want because the more you paint the better you get and the more you paint your own style and in your own way the more used to paint in that kind of way you get um, there's nothing worse than being told a specific way of painting because every painter is individual everyone paints in different ways so what works for me might not necessarily work for you or the exact colors that I use might not be the best colors for your army or your paint job so I like to just give people a rough guide a rough idea and show you how I paint and then let you decide on which bits you uh, you want to adapt into your own style as well um, that's the fun side to me is the more the more you paint the more uh, the more you enjoy the better you get so that's the idea is you want to keep on painting keep on enjoying and paint as much as you want so there we go now our brown is dried and you've got your khaki your green your brown and what I'm doing is just using a slightly off tone um, grey so for me I use German grey quite a lot for this because I don't personally like to um, paint normally in just a set black. You can use black if you want, you know, if, if you're comfortable painting in just black, then you carry on and use black. But for me, this German grey has just got a slight, slight extra tone, extra colour to it. It's almost got a very, very, very faint sort of dark blue tone to it. Um, and because of that, it separates from being just one flat shade of black. Um, which is great so what you want to do is just go in between like the detailed areas so as you see I'm just using it behind the, the, the knees and around the uh, the joints of the armor and then you only just use it to add a little bit of a small addition to that armor so uh, a small addition to the camouflage so as I was saying we've got the khaki we've got the dark green we've got the brown those are big patches so we're just going to use small patches of this um, dark, dark grey. Um, and that, again, just separates those colours and just creates a little bit of a, a camouflage pattern and creates a little bit more um, of an interest in miniature then. So it's not going to be just one flat colour, one flat tone, anything like that. And the contrast is nice as well, because when you look at the contrast between that, that dark grey, that German grey, versus the lightness of that khaki on the armour, you've got a really nice element of contrast between that light and dark, with two mid-tone colours uh, coming through on the, uh, the camouflage as well. Now with this colour as well, I normally paint the weapon the same colour, um, and again that just ties it into the miniature, and it's another part of the... Um, the detailing and things that you can go around and paint weapons however you like you know I mean everyone's got different ways of painting weapons and you probably watched a ton of tutorials on how to do different weapons and space marine weapons and so on and so on and so on so you paint how you want as I said to you before as you see just trying to use little smaller bits around the hands and around the arms because you don't want to use too big uh, we don't need to use it too big and then create sort of like uh, lose a lot of the detail and and, and depth that we've used for our camouflage. What I tend to do with this is, as you'll see, I just use it to break up that, um, I, I tend to use it to paint just down between the green and brown, just to, um, to break up those colors, just to break those colors between each other, that's all. For the leather, start with a, a, a dark shade, uh, a, a dark sort of um, a dark layer of dark rust from Vallejo. This is one of my favourite go-to colours, dark rust. I use this for a lot of different things, like uh, leathers, um, dark skin tones. I use this for as well. This dries very dark, but it's also a brilliant paint for you to use lighter colours and tone up and create more depth with. It's very similar to the Citadel Dryad Bark. So if you use Dryad Bark a lot, Dark Rust from Vallejo would be a very, very similar and easy to use um, adjustment if you switch in between. Um, either paint is, is equally as good. Um, so from there we're going to move on to um, just painting some of the details across the top armour. So like I said, because just going to paint this a little bit like a um, 
uh, an ultramarine just to give you an idea as to how it looks. Uh, for this I'm using a Citadel Retributor armor. There are a lot of different gold um, colors on the market, and a lot of different gold paints on the market. This one has got to be my favorite gold. Um, it's bright, but it's not too bright. Um, it doesn't take multiple layers. It, it sits on the miniature perfectly in the first layer. Um, it's also a brilliant, brilliant color to add shade onto. Um, it, it's perfect. It, it's my my favorite. So to give the impression that we've got this um, this sort of um, active camo um, or this sort of reactive motion, what we're going to do? We're just going to pick a really nice light blue. And I mean, you can use any color. I've seen people use like really bright oranges and things like that. That's a really cool touch as well. I'm um, pretty much with this. What I'm doing is I'm just using like a light blue and I'm just stippling that blue on because with this, it's kind of hard to, to, to explain, but obviously this is like a, a, a fake layer because this layer wouldn't technically exist. You know, it's kind of like electricity then. So we kind of just stipple in this on so that it, it creates this, um, uh, this effect of uh, electricity or or the armor actively electrifying down through the miniature or down through the armor um, so by stippling this you're not creating an exact or a specific or a straight line which is kind of what I like because you kind of want it to almost be reactive you don't want it to be precise or exact you want it to be kind of blotchy kind of dotty because electricity doesn't kind of or that kind of effect wouldn't be in exact straight lines or anything like that. Um, or at least that's how I see it. I mean, you, you could paint it however. If that's how you want to paint it and you want to do a straight lines, give it a go, let me know how it works for you. Um, this is just my little personal take on it. So once you've stippled that light blue um, and, and you've got that really nice bright light contrast blue, just gonna to wanna to go and use uh, a white, and you can use any white. For me, I'm using a dead white. You can use um, a white scar or anything like that. Really nice light white. And with a very, very thin, thin brush, you just wanna paint a very, very, very thin layer across and over the, um, uh, through, through the middle of that light blue. And by painting that really light, thin white, you give that contrast, that element of that blue light is getting warmer and brighter to the center point and that's exactly what we're looking for we're looking for that brightness almost as if it's light and it's bright breaking through that armor to sort of like uh, like arrow the nanobots or something or the nano light is, is just changing that that field so once you've done that um for me then i just go on and paint over a, a nice flash uh, a nice um shade across the miniature i couldn't talk for a second and i completely lost myself i'm sorry um I, I just cover the miniature in a nice shade so for me i'm using the uh the army painter shades um and i've done that across the the whole miniature the top and the bottom and then once i've painted that across i'm just going to go back and then build that color back up so on top then we're going back to the original color so we're going back to the dark prussian blue and i'm just going to hit then the highlighted points and hit those edges and kind of build that color back up so that we get that nice bright tone but also we get that darkness sat in the recessed areas and in the shade areas there and for this bit, you kind of want to take your time. You might want a steady hand or anything like that, or just take it nice and slow and just build this layer up. More layers is always better. I mean, if it takes you a couple of layers to get to a stage where you're happy, that's fine. I'd rather that than slap the paint on too thick and then lose out on all of the hard work that you've done. So once the blue is back up to the layer that we want, just going to tidy up and add a little bit more to this electric blue because now that I've shaded over kind of lost a little bit of the lightness so we're just going to build our lightness back up and the good thing with this is because the layer below has got a little bit of shade on if you leave a little bit of a crease it's going to give you that tone and that definition of a little bit of a darker blue into a lighter blue into the white, which is kind of what we want. We want that kind of build up tone, that build up effect. We don't want it to just be one flat color. 
um, which is great. And you could tidy anything up as well in this stage. I mean, if you've painted it and you kind of think, ooh, the stippling effect hasn't worked, or oh, I don't know if the straight line effect has worked properly for me, then you can go in and add and change and build and do whichever uh, kind of thing you like. So we're gonna go back and then redo the, um, the camouflage across the bottom. So again, like I was just saying, with the the, the shade is now sat on those colors whereas we're going to add this color back on top so I'm starting to go back through with the Kagi whereas we're going to add this color back on top um, you don't have to be exact or precise with it because it's going to give you the definition and tone of a little bit of darker underneath as well and that's great because I'll add in a little bit more layer and texture and tone to your miniature as well you're going to want to do this with all of the colors that you've done across the camouflage so at the moment I'm just starting with the khaki but we will progress and do the brown and the green and things like that as well um, this bit can be quite fiddly so again take your time have fun don't get too bogged down and think that you just gotta splodge your on and go take your time really enjoy it I tend to paint really really quickly for um, my videos so you don't have to follow me and just do it all like straight away like going straight from the khaki straight straight to the green you know if you want to take your time and build these things up then you go for it, it it's better the longer you take on a miniature the longer you take in painting um, the more detail you can find and the more um, the more satisfied you'll be with the paint job at the end. You don't want to just rush through every paint job. And I know it's exciting when you get new miniatures, you know, and sit down and paint them as quickly as possible. But I find if you take your time, you tend to uh, you tend to get more satisfaction out of the end result. So as I said, we've done the Kagi, gone and rebuilt that, and we just rebuild in this uh, military green backup, like I said. I mean, if you don't want to use this as an active camo and you just want to paint the camouflage and use the colors that I'm using, um, then by all means, you use what you need. If uh, if any of my paintings or tutorials or paint-alongs help you out, then please let me know. I'd, I'd be happy to, to know that um, any of my videos help people out and, and, and allow you to sort of improve or find something new or come across a a different or unique style of painting and that's that's great that's that's what painting is all about it's all about building it's all about learning it's all about improving and I've got a long way to go myself you know this is all very basic stuff at the minute so as I said we've done the car you have done the green we're just doing the brown now as well um, by not being exact or precise on the exact same spots we leave in that little bit of a darker layer between as well which is creating that depth and creating the um, the individual colors on the uh, the camouflage as well which is great here we go as you see just trying to take my time and hit the points that uh, There you go. So you can see just that little gap between the, the green and the, the brown there on the on the um, on on that piece of armor, which shows that there's a little bit of a, a depth between those parts of the armor. So for that layer of light blue, I'm just going to go across and use an army paint of blue tone now. The reason why I'm using an army painter blue tone is the army painter blue tone is very, very subtle. It's a blue shade or a blue wash or whichever way you want to call it, but it's a very, very subtle blue. So this will give you a little bit of um, a little bit of definition in those um, creased and recessed areas, but without darkening your miniature. See. Citadel do a Dragon off Nightshade, which is a great blue shade, but it does darken down, so you do have to thin that shade to get the desired result. Whereas with the Army Painter Blue Tone, you don't have to thin it to get this result. It starts out quite thin, so it's a very subtle, um, it's a very subtle shade, which is perfect for this kind of effect because then you're going to get that depth of the miniature but without losing or darkening down that bright sort of um, colour effect that we've got going on. So there you go. Just going to build up some of the leather so I'm just going on the flat earth across the leather belt and um, his pistol holster as well. 
And for leathers, I tend to use a lot of straight lines as much as I can because by using the straight lines with your brush, you kind of create scratches and create sort of like a worn effect to the leather, which is um, kind of what you want out of leather. You don't want the leather colors or tones to be um, flat. You kind of want them to look like they scratched and worn and been used quite a lot. Um, leathers tend to be like sort of um, the more worn they get the more scratchy they get and they look a little bit more run down and broken and patchy which is great that's that's you know that's a, that's a great sort of um, it's a great sort of look for your miniatures because you don't want them to be just too flat all the time so I tend to try to use straight lines very very thin brush strokes um, uh, sorry, light brush strokes with a very, very, very tip, very edge of the brush, and also with a very thin down paint as well, so that that underneath colour will sort of um, show through a little bit as well to create that element of depth and things like that as well. Again, this is something, this is a technique that you take time and you kind of pick up and you learn as you go anyway. So from there, I'm just going to go through the leather brown, so this is like a lighter colour. So I've built up from the very, very dark, we've had our mid-tone and now we're just hitting our highlight. And there's a few different ways that you can do this. You could just edge highlight if you want, or you can use those straight line kind of effects that I was talking about. Or you can put this on in patches. Depends on how you, uh, how you enjoy the paint leather. For me, I tend to use just the straight lines and mostly around the edges. Not a strict edge highlighting as such but just enough to pick out sort of the, the brighter edged areas of the um, the leather points on the miniature. And we're just going to go back and do our dead white again, just our, our layer of white back through the blue, just so that we know where we are and how the blue effect is going to look. Um, for this bit to, to kind of contrast that stippling effect of the, um, of the blue, just using straighter lines, so I kind of got a little bit of a, 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 a mixture. So I've got the stippled blue, which is kind of creating this random pattern. And then very, very thin, light, white lines, almost like sort of, um, I don't know, just like a, a lightning effect through the, uh, through the miniature itself. Um, if there's something that I've learned from doing this video, um, I would probably use a much thinner brush to do that because you kind of want that, that, that white to be very, very thin. Um, once you get to that stage and you get to the end, this is how it'll look. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. This is the first attempt that I've done at a, a, a kind of miniature in this sort of active camo style. Um, let me know in the comments if you think this is good. Um, if you want to take a look at how I've done the dark skin tones for the model as well, that's on a previous one where I've done a fire slayer using the exact same uh, recipe for the skin tones. Um, I, I personally love having a good diversity in my miniatures, a lot of different skin colors, skin tones, things like that. It creates some really, really cool um, and diverse miniatures and diverse armies as well. As always, my friends, thank you very, very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.